and relax. It's time for your daily dose of Big D Energy. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, um, to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. Big D. Oh, geez. <laughs> Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I am Flannel Sam, filling in for That's Neil awesome. Rule, who is calling the NCAA tournament game tonight between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Man, that would be a hell of an upset if that were to happen. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. The man to my left is Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings. We've got KG in the audio booth we've got matt broder hanging around hey. i don't know if he's just chilling or wants to like hop on whatever you want it's all good i, 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 I think he's uh staying close to the uh ticker to see if what happens uh you know a little shout out to anybody wondering about the cam sutton uh still uh, on the lamb as they say right spenny yeah, yeah that's yeah. for on, sure on the lamb so uh as of 9 20 um, the Burkett reported, so Broder's sitting right here, up to speed, as you can see yesterday. TikTok, Broder, you had it, you had it going yesterday, so hopefully this, uh, situation, uh, comes to a close. Yeah, absolutely. Great work, by the way, to, to you, Broder. You had quite a busy day yesterday. I'm sure you didn't anticipate that when you woke up, but you know what? That's why you do what you do so well. And of course, we have Spenmo Rax in the TD booth, as always. I have a feeling for the second half of the show, you might be a little bit distracted, but I can't blame you yeah, because if I'm I definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely turning that TV on right there to. Michigan State. And I don't blame you. Let's go, baby. Hey. Let's go. You fired up, Spend Big game. Big game. Big game. We need A.J. Hogard last year's tournament, A.J. Hogard. That's what okay. we need. We need Malik Hall, how he's been playing this year, and last year's tournament, A.J. Hogard. The rest of the guys play how you've been playing. We win this game if that happens. No, that's I, I agree with you 100% on that one. And, hey, I don't blame you at all because I wish that I could have uh, something to distract me, but, unfortunately, my team was 8-24. Wah, wah. Wah, yep. wah, wah. Yeah, but oh, you wah. got the greatest gift you ever wanted. The right? national championship or Juwan no, Howard? He, J- Juwan Howard yeah. <laughs> being gone. I mean, that's all you've ever that's all you ever wanted. To, now you can move forward, right? I mean, I would have preferred for him to work out. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But uh, there was some fear, at least amongst me, and I think some of my fellow Michigan fans, that uh, Juwan Howard was going to get away with this scot-free, and he did not. So uh, let's see what Michigan basketball does going forward. But Michigan State, that's the nature of the season. You guys can right all of the wrongs of the regular season with a deep tournament run. So uh, I get Spenny. I I am going to live vicariously through you, but I will also root for Mississippi State. Hey. As you would, as as you would. In that's Michigan. true. That's it's, true. See, and, and that's why, and that's why we understand each other. Hey, speaking of teams that we had to grit our teeth and root for, maybe reluctantly, how about the Toronto Maple Leafs last night, Ooh. handing the Washington Capitals an absolute beatdown at their place, seven to three. So that means the Red Wings are still in that playoff spot. And man, I'll tell you what, and I know we're going to get into it a little bit later. The Red Wings had a really tough stretch, but if they can turn it around soon. They might be getting to a spot where they can again be comfortably in and control their own destiny. I know they got some work to do to that, but but the Toronto Maple Leafs certainly did us a favor, D-Mac. I'm sure that pained you to root for them, though. Well, no, it didn't, but we brought it out yesterday. Remember, we were going to do a 12 hours uh, Toronto, yes. so mm-hmm. big D energy. You get a nice little second assist on that, Spenny. You uh, you get credit for that that you're gonna you're gonna go on the score sheet. And my rack second assist because Appreciate you brought that. it up. So now we're back down to hate in Montreal, but uh, no. So we got to take care of business at hand. Yeah, absolutely. I, t- I said this all along during that seven uh, game losing streak. He still got time left and it's the games in front of you, Sam. And I like the maturity that you said you, you looking to see that every team's got to go through it at some point in the season. Brodo was asking me about paying attention to the rest of the league, because as we know, you know, it's coming down to playoff time and stuff like this. And this is usually where the cream rises. So hopefully tonight, which is the biggest game of the year, four-point game, what you can do to the Islanders is that you're ready to play. And the win that you were able to come back and do it in such exciting, dramatic fashion the other night, you got to carry it over. So that's that's the only way that last game really matters. Or last night cheering for Toronto. The fact is you're going to make me cheer for Toronto and then you're not going to beat the Islanders at home. Come on. That's, Betty, that's just not how it works. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, that's that, that's also a must win. But we're going to get into that into that a little bit more detail later. As as I mentioned at the beginning, 
You might want to do a little TV flipping tonight between the Red Wings and the Oakland Golden Grizzlies playing the Kentucky Wildcats, a three versus a 14 matchup in the NCAA tournament. And as Neil Rule always says, this is a free roll. If they win, and I discussed this with him on Monday's show, it's the greatest sport, sports accomplishment in school history. And if they lose, you lost to Kentucky. Big deal. Kentucky's got a very talented team, a couple of uh, top five ranked uh, on big boards when it comes to the NBA draft, Antonio Reeves. It's going to be a tough one, but uh, I'm sure going to be watching. And man, would it be an electric show on Friday if Oakland were actually able to pull off the upset. Let's hope for more Neil Rule day off, days off next week. Not because we don't love him, not because you guys love me, but because he gets to call more NCAA tournament games. We shall certainly see. A team that has given us very little joy this season the Detroit Pistons actually got hit with some uh, some news that makes the season go from bad to worse. And I'm going to just read it from a Pistons forward. Asar Thompson will miss the remainder of the 2023-2024 season while being treated for a blood clot. Under the guidance of Pistons team physician Dr. Ramsey Shahab of Henry Ford Health, Thompson has been cleared to resume conditioning and will begin non-contact basketball activities at the conclusion of the regular season with a gradual ramp up over the summer months in preparation for a full return next season. And also Pistons center Isaiah Stewart will miss the remainder of the 2023-24 season with a right hamstring strain suffered during the third quarter of Monday's contest at Boston. Mm -hmm. So, on a human level, man, blood clots are nothing to uh, F with. So, shout, I mean, prayers to uh, Asar Thompson. Hopefully, he can get back on the court healthy next year and just live a healthy life because you know how blood, blood clots can be uh, dangerous. I mean, Spenny, how, how are you feeling when you heard that news? Yeah, it sucks. It's, it's, it's scary. You know, you never want to hear that, especially with somebody so young, man. Yeah. He's so yeah. young, such a great athlete. Hopefully, uh, we know that blood clots are what ended uh, – uh, Chris Bosch's career. Yeah. So this is something that could linger for a while. So hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he 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 gets through this. He gets healthy and he's able to go back to being the Asar Thompson that we watched and that we liked seeing out there. Hey G, how are you feeling? Same. Uh, yeah. Spenny said it all. You you don't wish that on nobody. I hope you know his recovery goes well. Um, shame to see he's had an okay rookie season and just hopefully he can get back to 100%. Yeah, on a human level, you feel really, really bad for Asar Thompson and just hope that he can get back to doing what he loves on a basketball level. Man, I think with Asar Thompson being out and even Isaiah Stewart, that all but guarantees that the Pistons yeah. are not going to reach the uh, 18 <laughs> wins that I was hoping that they would get get to. That wasn't even that high of, of, of a bar. And obviously, I changed my expectations a little bit, and I went through this on Wake Up Woodward when it was like, just win 18 for the love of God. You can't have a healthy Cade Cunningham all season and win less than that. But it looks like they will. Despite Asar Thompson and Spenny, I think you would agree with me, he had a pretty successful rookie season. Yeah, he did. He looked good when he was out there. And obviously the shooting thing is something that a lot of people will harp on. But he was one of the best defenders in the league when he's yeah. on the floor. Like, the guy is a menace. He was a freak protecting the paint in the beginning of the season until Monty benched him for some reason. <laughs> yes. And is a monster on the glass. So he, he's, he's a great player and hopefully that... Uh, hopefully he comes back to, to well, what that's, he wants. Well, that's the thing, right? Uh, being the youth and when it comes to uh, blood clots, I saw somebody uh, say it, it's uh, got a long-term medication. Right? Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that like, the human being is okay too because this isn't <laughs> this isn't like a, a f immediately fixed with a surgery and right, stuff like right. that. So this is... This is deeper, you know, than that because you want to see if it's a hereditary thing, if it's something, you know, like yeah. yours or the family. I know he's got a twin brother and somebody brought it up, you know, like, so this is like the health concern. Now, now, I look at the brighter side, right? If it was going to happen, right, is now the perfect time because this season is sort of, yeah, sort of put yeah. it away anyways. And, and yeah, it, it's sad, but it, it gives them the opportunity to, to go out. What my big thing is, is this the last we see beef stew, or is it, is this you Maybe. know one of these things that we've talked about before, Spenny, about how's this team going to look different and stuff like that? So I mean that that that's the only thing that that draws up. I'm not worried about competition wise or you know 18 wins and stuff like this. It's just uh, humanity for Oscar Thompson, and then what's it the future of uh, Isaiah Thomas in a, or in a Pistons jersey? Look? Yeah, yeah. It's a good question because that's definitely – Does it give opportunity to somebody that you guys want to see get more opportunity? Uh, Samon Fontecchio. He, he is yeah. going to get the starting role, obviously, now. He is going to be in the starting lineup. And I personally believe he should have been all year, even mm -hmm. if Isaiah Stewart is healthy. Like, I think he's a much better fit 
than than Isaiah Stewart is in that starting lineup next to Jalen Duran. So I'm excited to see him get an extended amount of minutes playing with Kate Cunningham, playing with Jaden Ivey, and hopefully he he brings the best out of it. But I agree, D mate. That's a position like the biggest position to need for the Pistons is power forward. I'm mm-hmm. not the biggest Isaiah Stewart fan. I, I think on a good team he's your big off the bench. So if if he is part of a package with that number one overall pick or whatever first round pick you get this year to go after a guy like I don't know Brandon Ingram, which I would, <laughs> that would be my dream Please scenario. Make it um, happen. That would be he'd definitely be a piece that you flash to teams because teams do like guys like Isaiah Stewart. Yeah, he, he is an important piece uh, on an NBA team, but just not this one. No, and that's the thing. Isaiah Stewart has actually had. I, in my estimation, a better year than maybe I anticipated. Defensively, he's been all right. His three-point shot has actually improved, which yeah. I will give him credit for. But as you said, Spenny, I want to see more Simone Fontecchio. And when you really, when you really lay it out there, and I think this has been the most frustrating thing about the Detroit Pistons as a whole. And I mentioned this on Wake Up Woodward. The whole is lesser than the sum of their parts yeah. because we've seen that Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey have had a lot of issues playing together. Jaden Ivey has not really looked good the last uh, 15, 16 games or so. I mean, Simone Fontecchio, a guy you brought in who's been a rousing success. He's given you way more than what you could have anticipated when you first saw the name. Mm-hmm. Jalen Duran's a walking double double, although defensively he's regressed a little bit. That's been disappointing. But yeah. Unfortunate season for the Detroit Pistons, and I think that's going to be... They shut the whole team down. Yeah. Hey, at, at, at this <laughs> point. But but shout out to our Sar Thompson, by the way, since he's uh, since he just had a blood clot. I need to, I need to prop him up. He had a hell of a rookie year, honestly. Yeah. If yeah. he could learn how to shoot the threes, he would be, man. A yeah. superstar. He's, yeah. If he could shoot the three at like 30%, he would be a superstar in that. Yeah. NBA. The offense will come, and he's also going to get better in the mid-range yeah. as well. So And he's he's shown progress in the mid-range. Shout, yeah. out, shout out to him for that. I mean, I can – and I've said, I, I've said this before – objectively i'd say he's had a more impactful rookie season than scoot henderson his brother amen taylor Hendricks, jarris walker yeah so uh, amen's heating up right now he i is, will say that yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah definitely than than scoot or jarris walker yeah i would agree with that i mean um, yeah you're right amen by the end of the year his numbers might might look really really good and it's different he's on a team that's doing a little bit more winning a little right. further down the road but asar thompson he's been a net positive and i know he was mm-hmm. somebody who there were some questions about him being drafted, but I'm certainly glad he's on. He's on the uh, Pistons, certainly, if nothing else, because he's, pro- he's probably the best defensive player on the team. Yeah, he is the best By defensive far, player right. on the team. I don't Not even know why even I said prob- The only reason I'd even think to say probably is because it seems so unfathomable as a rookie, but he is. Yeah. He 100% is. And before we uh, go to break. I got a couple things. Go ahead. Benny, what's the best email? To reach the show. Uh, I put out mine in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there, Spencer at Woodward Sports. And uh, also, too, uh, before we go to break, Wednesdays is giveaway, obviously, and stuff like that. So we don't want to make you wait here, Big D Energy. So, Spenny, do you have the winner of the DMAC giveaway puck? I think we give away a puck this week. Yes, we do. We have a, a puck and a t shirt. Oh, and a t shirt. Yeah, All d- right. Double giveaway. So the winner of the puck. Shout out my brother, his namesake, Spencer W. Spencer W. W. Shout out to Spencer W. He won the autographed puck. And then the t-shirt giveaway is Zach Staronsky. So shout out to Zach Staronsky for also winning one of the giveaways. Those are the two giveaways we're doing for Wings Wednesday. Zach Staronsky and Spencer W. You guys are the winners. Congratulations. Yep. Now now you have a chance to win. If you haven't won next week, uh, you will see... uh, Click to enter. We'll give it out on Wednesdays. And uh, before the first uh, break on Thursday, you'll determine the winner. So, looks like nepotism not only in sports, but at Woodward Sports uh, <laughs> works out. So, all you Spencers, make sure you get it in. Uh, it's true. Uh, although it is, no, it is drawn uh, randomly. So, we appreciate everybody who's tried tried back. But, uh, yeah. you know, thanks for being a part of it. Hopefully, that's just what we need for a big two points tonight down at LC. Absolutely. Congratulations to uh, Spencer W. And I want to I want to read this really quick. Sam, so you're saying this is from Steve O, baby. You're willing to give the Pistons a chance, even though you said F the Pistons. No. <laughs> that didn't the, age well, did it? It, it? it did age well. Here's why. Because when I'm talking about <laughs> Asar Thompson having a successful rookie year, I'm talking about Cade Cunningham putting up all-star numbers. I'm talking about Fontecchio being a really good addition Jaden Ivey's been a little disappointing number-wise, but still, he's been all right. And then Marcus Sasser being a 40% three-point shooter. Jalen Duren being a walking double-double. And they're still the worst team in the NBA. F the Pistons still, still stands right now because 
even and here's the thing when I gave them the arbitrary 18 wins it was just the bare 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 minimum to say you didn't set your uh your your record for losses in a season or you were better than last year technically with, with a full season of Cade Cunningham it's still f the Pistons there is nothing that they can do to have a successful season it's just I'm coping right now it's and fair. uh that, that that's all that is so absolutely it is still f the Pistons I'm not I'm not trying to be a slappy or anything like that my whole point of it, almost everything I say is that yeah they got young talent yeah a lot of that young talent has shown us some things but it hasn't resulted in anything except absolute pain and misery but do you know what never results in pain and misery especially when they bring it to you on the show Shake Shack yes sir when it comes to chicken sandwiches I have got the sleeper it's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Delicious. Try the Chicken Shack Sandwich for free with a $10, $10 purchase. Grab a shake and crispy crinkle fry and your Chicken Shack will be free. Just use the code word Woodward in person, online, or download the Shake Shack app today. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs. Food trucks and of course shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. What's better than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play? Let me tell you about Soroki's crispy chicken and pizza. Their food is amazing and their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. A perfect takeout option featuring hand breaded fried chicken. New York style pizza, fresh salad, sides, and more. Check out their full menu and find the closest Sorokis near you at Sorokis.com. That's S A R O K I S.com. Sorokis and Woodward Sports. Now that's crispy. Welcome back to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. I am Flannel Sam. The man to my left is four time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings, Darren McCarty. We've got KG in the audio booth, Spencer Raxter in the TD booth, and Matt Broder hanging around just in case there's some breaking news. He will be the first to break it on this show. Man, I almost hope that it does, and I hope that it's good news. But unfortunately, yesterday, we got some not good news about Cam Sutton. And it was kind of fun trying to process it in real time and spitball some things and like some some ideas of how you could fix the team or if he's going to be off the team what how we, if we should judge him if we need to wait for some facts it was definitely a whirlwind but now we've had a night to sleep on it i've caught a big part of E&E &E and Woodward Heavyweights as well, watching you guys all break it down. You guys do a great job. Matt Broder has been on, has been basically like you know, his phone right by right. his side waiting for any news that could be heard. But I think at some point we have to take it to the football side of things, which we did to some extent yesterday. But uh, we've had a night to process it a little bit. And I think we have to at least prepare as fans for the possibility that Cam Sutton will not be there next year. Because the more we learn, the more it just doesn't look good with like the running, with the not being able to locate him. Still innocent until proven guilty, but this isn't the court of law. This is keeping him on the football team or not. So with that all being said, I am going to start with you, DMAC, when it comes to, because we've all had maybe a night to process and maybe we've changed our minds about some things. Maybe we have some different ideas. With Cam Sutton possibly not being there, does this change the Detroit Lions draft plans at all? Well, I think that the, the you know one thing that's changed perspective is the fact that he hasn't turned himself in, that this yeah. is going to drag out and this is more serious. So you better, yeah. you better if I'm Dan Campbell or Brad Holmes, Cam Sutton is 
taken off and sort of put to the side and I, and it's sort of like it's he's not even there i gotta i gotta act like right. i'm not even gonna have him right so yeah. now now does that change does this you've made changes and you've improved the cornerback room but does this change your draft mentality now that you we were talking about it yesterday about moving up and really having a having the option to do anything well this sort of changes it and does, does that make one of the cornerbacks whether it's kool-aid whether it's whoever guys names that you're bringing up more of a priority and i think that it probably does or it's changed things like I, and i just picture it's like you know nobody wants this that to, to happen to anybody especially you know in in your family uh, of this but dan campbell's like he's just you know he punched the wall yesterday yeah. I mean, he he, yeah. he hit the weights extra hard. It's the, you know mm -hmm. that's like one of those. Bah! Yeah. And you know what? I <laughs> listen. I've been the Cam Sutton, not to the extent, You're so right, to speak, right. but been the come on, man, like whatever else. So, but what good teams do, right, Sam? And it doesn't matter who this is. Let it a lesson to be learned. This goes along the ways. We always think that when Dan Campbell's talking about losing starters, he's talking about injuries. This is. <sighs> This is, you yeah. know, for lack of a better term, a long-term injury. So what are you going to do now? I have trust that the fact that, that they've known since this happened when, March 7th, so this is like two weeks ago and stuff like this, whether the moves that, that they've made since then have, have sped them up to make different moves, but they're totally aware. So maybe there's guys like I, I wouldn't know who's out there. I wouldn't know what you try to try to see. You want to see him turn in you want to see the legal process start moving to see right, what you're right. at so really right now until that happens yeah you can make some moves or some decisions but for more than not i think it's uh how you're going to approach the draft yeah and uh just a fan i think puts it perfectly there are many more questions regarding cam sutton than answers and there were certainly even more questions yesterday when it broke that's why i wasn't too comfortable jumping to conclusions or making bold proclamations or anything like that it was more spitballing but as we said before we at least have to prepare for the possibility that he is not there kg does that train change the lions draft strategy at all the possibility that cam sutton will not be there well just first off i know he's technically still on the run but we don't know his physical and, and mental sure. state so i would just urge people to you know let's just wait for due process to come hopefully you know he'll be able to face what he did and get the help he needs but to um, that point kenny because isn't it the longer that it goes now i'm more you like start to i'm worry. more fearing for his his safety as yeah. a as a human being yeah. not as a football player it totally goes like it's just something really wrong exactly here and that's more more concerning in right. this generation, it's it's hard to go missing for that amount of time, and nobody yeah. has no contact with you whatsoever. So um, let's just hope that the situation works itself out for the best. But as far as the Lions draft strategy, I don't think it changes much. I, I do feel like they were going to add a, another corner to this room regardless. But now that you you know you're essentially your number two corner, uh, you can't expect him to you know play this year. Uh, with everything going on, I think that maybe they have to move that priority up a little bit. Uh, maybe second round, maybe first round. We don't know. But um, I definitely think that they were going to draft a corner regardless. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see. But definitely I would, you know, I would more so like a, a higher tier corner. Uh, maybe move up for one if you can. But, um, yeah, we just got to see how the situation plays out. Yeah, and uh, I, I have to I have to throw this out there as well. I have no idea if there'd be any clauses if you know he is found guilty of something. I'm still jumping to some conclusions, but Cam Sutton's dead cap is 19 million. I'm just throwing that out there. We shall see how it all plays out. I just wanted to get that out in the air. Spend Mo Rex. Does this situation with Cam Sutton and him possibly not being there, does that affect the Alliance draft plans in your estimation? Yeah, and uh, again, just to reiterate reiterate what kg said you just hope the guy's okay absolutely like, yeah you hope the victim is okay and healthy but of course as as being a professional athlete and a guy who's pretty noticeable in the community not in touch with anybody or not seen by anybody for two weeks you start to to worry a little bit about his health and his safety but um yeah if if he does be found guilty of these charges which are extreme charges in my mind and which is something that will get him kicked off the team if he is found guilty of these charges 
Yeah, it's you, you got to look at it a little harder. And they've already met with guys like Kool Aid McKinstry in, in pre draft meetings. They met with, uh, you know, um, oh, what's uh, Quinion Mitchell yeah. mm-hmm. in, in pre draft meetings. So they, it's not like cornerback was completely off the board at twenty nine right. before this, but yeah. it definitely jacks it up a little bit if if the uh, if the you know the process has found that it's true and he, and he did these things and isn't a part of the Lions anymore then that is definitely something you're going to have to look into. It's, it's such a tough thing for a young team may, to uh, process, or at least I would I would have that estimation, especially a team like the Detroit Lions that is built on high-character guys, Dan Campbell guys, young drafted guys who not only are very, very talented players, but they're also high-character guys. They're not dicks, as Neil Rule would say. And I'm not saying that... a. Uh, that anything about Cam Sutton. It's just, that's what we thought that Cam Sutton was. And maybe he still is. I'm, I'm not trying to jump to too many conclusions. But like you guys have both said, hopefully, hope he's okay. Hope the victim's okay. Hopefully he can be located soon and we can get this all, we can get this all sorted out. Because I'm sure even the coaching staff and Brad Holmes and his teammates, they're worried about him too. And they're probably thinking, what the, what the heck is going on? I mean, DMAC. I know you've been in a lot of locker rooms. I mean, what, what could a situation like this do to like a, a young locker room? Well, that's, you know, I don't think this is as much of a young locker room. I think the concern, right, the biggest concern, you haven't seen the the guy in two weeks. This Mm -hmm. is out of character for whatever else, so there's something bigger at play. I mean, mental health is a huge thing, so without speculating, what you need to do in times like these or when things like this happen is you get tighter. So those guys are communicating, making sure they're checking in with each other. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, we didn't see this happen. Um... You know, it's the same sort of things, you know, uh, as losing losing guys. This this can galvanize, but this goes to show you how strong the culture is yeah. in there. Guys do care about each other, so, yeah. you know, that's that's one of the things. They're, they're definitely checking on each other because I think from everything that I'm, you know, hearing is that nobody saw it coming. Yeah. You know, and this is out of character, and, and we all said this yesterday. I mean, it's not in the bingo card that... This is Cam Sutton. He seemed like the you know right. consummate you know professional the way he talked and stuff. But it just goes to show you that you never know. You so never know somebody. I just want them. for the human being you know like like let's find like forget the the fact. Okay, you know what? Cam Sutton's not here. He 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 may for lack of a better term you know he had a workout injury in the in the off season and he's not available for the whole year. That's the mentality, and I think that's more the mentality coming out of there, but Dan Campbell, yeah. Brad Holmes, and the coaches, staff, and everybody, not just the players reaching out to each other, the coaching staff's reaching out to everybody, checking in. Yeah. That, that That's what's going on. And then, and maybe sometimes this is a lesson, sort of in life as you're building things and moving f- full speed ahead and everybody's got their head down, that every now and then you gotta you know lift up and check on each other. So right. maybe that's just a lesson for all of us. Yeah. yeah, tough situation. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully this whole thing can be sorted out soon. But yeah, it, there's you got the Lions have to prepare for the possibility that he's not on the team this year. And uh, I want to talk about that a little bit more, just what that could mean even football-wise, because we talk a lot about Cam Sutton and his absence. What's it going to mean for the team? Does it change their draft strategy? Does it change their free agent strategy? But I really wanted to really crystallize what a Cam Sutton absence would mean and what the importance of adding to the secondary, both what they, with what they already did and what, with what they could do or can do in the draft or the rest of free agency, what that could mean for the Detroit Lions as well. But uh, there is certainly no better defense in the world than guarding alarm, DMAC. Absolutely let guarding alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts, professional tech technicians who take the time to recommend security and automated solutions specific to your needs. But I need you to call Guardian Alarm today. The number 1 800. Stay out. 24 7 professional monitoring. Call your time, day or night. Know the Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as it's needed. But I need you to call the number 1 800. Stay out. Technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care. Business, pleasure. Guardian don't care. They just want you to call the number 1-800 stay out stay out of scoring any goals for the rest of the year islanders stay out of the net please rest of the year guardian alarm your local security experts tell big the energy we sent you
ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Detroit every other Monday. Welcome back to Big D Energy live on the Woodward Sports Network. I am Flannel Sam. We got Darren McCarty, KG, Spenmo Rex, and Matt Broder is still in the room. Hopefully, if, if there's any news to be broken, we got him right here in the building. And Broder, I think I'm actually going to make you kind of proud of me at this, at this point. Because we had our disagreements over the season about Cam Sutton, the player. Mm -hmm. But... I want to, because we talked about it yesterday, because we got the news and we're kind of spitballing ideas, but didn't have a whole lot of time to really process what, the, what this could mean to the Lions secondary. I kind of want to do that right now. What Cam Sutton's absence could mean and what other people's additions and potential additions could mean to the Detroit Lions secondary. And I'm going to start with uh, Cam Sutton. We all know last year he had a rough go of it, at least at the end. His last, three his last three regular season games were not good. His playoffs was not good. But you also have to take into account that he was put one-on-one -on, -one on an island against Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Puka Nakua, Mike Evans, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. Prime Darrell Revis is going to give up a play or two. But to be fair, Cam Sutton gave up more than a play or two. And overall, he did not have a good year, at least by the numbers. But one of the reasons we were so excited about getting him prior to last year, and this could be a role that maybe he could have fit in more this year, was in 2022 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, he only gave up a 69 passer rating when targeted. Nice. He was very, very good. Mm -hmm. He was. And he played primarily outside corner. And towards the end of the year, he actually uh, was more of the number one corner. And in 2020, by the way, which uh, given the additions to the secondary, I think this was relevant as well. He had a pretty good year playing primarily as a slot corner. So it just shows that Cam Sutton, if need be, he could have done both for this team. And then you look at people who they actually have. Carlton Davis, he's another one. Had a little bit of a rough go last year, at least at the beginning when it came to his numbers, but the previous four seasons by the numbers were very, very good. And even last season when he played in man, he was good. It's just that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers played more zone, which is a, not really a scheme fit for a Carlton Davis. And oh, by the way, Carlton Davis was great when he played the Lions both times. He was very good at the end of the year, and he was great in the playoffs. The problem with Carlton Davis is also he missed, uh, I believe, five games last year and 16 yeah. in the previous three. So that's one guy that you have. You you think he's your cornerback one but there's still a few questions about him and you can't really count on him being available for a 17 games but he's definitely an outside corner corner one big corner can is going to guard the justin jefferson types then you look at Amik Robertson, who last year, I was very high on what he did last year. Only gave up an 85.7 passer rating when targeted primarily as a outside corner for the Las Vegas Raiders. He only allowed 40 receptions for 445 yards. He was very, very good. The season before Amik Robertson, his numbers weren't quite the same, but he also played about half of his snaps as a slot and half outside, which tells you that he's another guy that is versatile. It, he can play in the slot, and he can be your number two cornerback if if it's called upon him. And then you go to Spenmo Rax's favorite player, Emmanuel Mosley, who you've slandered ruthlessly, <laughs> but I can't even blame you for this one because he didn't do dick for the Lions. Yes. Not his fault, not his fault, but uh, Emmanuel Mosley. He's got, and by the way, Amik Robertson, I forgot to mention, has played in all 17 games the last two years. So by his past history, he is very reliable. Emmanuel Mosley, in 2022, in the five games he did play, 
He gave up a 63.5 passer rating when targeted, and the 11 games in 2021 gave up a 72.1 passer rating when targeted. When you combine all of those 16 games, gave up 46 receptions for 343 yards, one touchdown while also having two interceptions. The problem with him is that you can't count on him being on the field. That's why you were able to get him so cheap for one year, $2.2 million. And one of the last guys I want to mention too, because he was also a big part of your coverage, probably one of the biggest parts, Brian Branch. And by the way, Emmanuel Mosley, if he's healthy, he's kind of that outside corner type who has played really well in the past, borderline dominant in 2021. Brian Branch. Believe it or not, Brian Branch last season was ranked fourth among corners who played primary in the slot, according to PFF. Fourth. The only guys ahead of him were Trent McDuffie, Devon Witherspoon, and uh, Michael Carter. You might have heard of those guys, particularly Trent McDuffie and uh, Devon Witherspoon. He was very, very good. Only allowed 42 receptions for 425, 424 yards, 86.9 passer rating when targeted. So he's a guy that can certainly play the slot corner and did it very, very well last year. Kirby Joseph played some as slot corner as well. He His coverage numbers actually, actually last year, even though he gave up some big plays, actually looked pretty good, inflated by the fact that he gave up zero touchdowns and four interceptions when targeted. So I guess what I'm trying to do there is to really give you an idea of what the Lions actually do have. You've got a guy in Carlton Davis when he's healthy that can be the cornerback one. You've got a guy in Amik Robertson who has shown last year that he is capable of being an outside corner. You've got uh, Emmanuel Mosley who if he's healthy would probably slot into the number two corner if he can be fully healthy. Two straight ACLs are very, very tough. You've got Brian Branch who can play slot corner. You've got Amik Robertson who can also play slot corner. You've got Kirby Joseph who can play slot and if he can as well. He played some in the slot. So I guess the... Uh, the question is, and why I bring that up, is to really crystallize what we do have and just, I, I wanted to paint a clearer picture of what we actually need. So I guess I will start with, uh, I'll start with you, Terry McCarty. What do you want to see? Who would you like to see the Detroit Lions uh, number two corner be next year? Would you like to see them go after a free agent? Would you like to see someone in the draft? Or do you think we might have that in-house? Could be, could be all three. Yeah. I think that now, if I'm going to change my bingo board, I would say it's probably more of a draft thing, yeah. right? Like, the, you know what the thing, Sam, and, and I go back to is, like, if you could ever find an O.J. McDuffie or, a, like, a draft, a guy like Kansas City, like, what mm -hmm. made Kansas City so good is the way that they drafted. And if it is, if you're going for that number two guy, 29 might be there, might move up. Mike stuff like that. He might be in the building. There's going to be competition for it. And the thing is, Sam, there's questions that you're you're asking. Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are already oh, yeah. asking stuff like this. So if I'm going to lean, I think I'm going to lean right now. Is what am I going to hear if I'm talking to Matt Broder saying, "Hey, what, what's what's the sniff around the cornerbacks in the draft? Is it, are they leaning more that way just because of what this has has come to? Is there a free agent out there that you like?" Ooh. Is there a right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know at the, as a number two, isn't a number two, you're more willing to give a guy an opportunity that you like his talent grow yeah. into, right? Yeah. You're not throwing him on an island as being number one right out of the draft and expecting him to be Sauce Gardner and stuff like this. You're allowing a guy to come in here and sort of learn around. You've also made the rest of your, your, your team better. You know, your secondary, what is Brian Branch now? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. how does how so I mean there's questions you know to be answered, but I think that the simple simple answer to it is I'm looking in the draft. I'm I'm starting to look at the draft as who who are the cornerbacks that could fill that role. Yeah, and and that that's I I would say the draft. There's definitely a lot of good options whether you want to trade up, twenty nine later rounds. There are there are plenty of them. But like I said before, I don't think that this corner room, when it comes to the number two corner, that you're necessarily doomed even if Cam Sutton isn't there. I like Amik Robertson a lot. Emmanuel Mosley, you pray that he's healthy, but obviously Spedmo, as you know, you can't count on that. So uh, Spedmo Rex, who are you looking to potentially be your number two corner? Are you looking for another free agent, a draft pick, somebody in-house? What say you? I think Amik Robertson's ready to step up and fill that role. I, I honestly do. I think he does. I think he was going to battle cam sutton for that role if he was ready to go in camp already 
Like, he's proven that he could do that. He proved for the Raiders last year that he was kind of forced into that spot because of injury. But when he was there, he stepped up and he made things happen. So this is a guy who has the experience, who has the tenacity, who is a guy that Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell like to have on their defense. And I don't think it's uh, it's too crazy to say he could be your cornerback too going forward because he played very well on the outside for the Raiders, and I think he could do it again for the Lions if he has to. That's the thing. He had a really good year. Yeah. And he got him for, what, two years, $9 million or $9.25 million. And you're, you're right, Spenny. If, if Amik Robertson is your number two corner, and that's assuming Carlton Davis is healthy at number one, that's not – that's not the worst. Obviously, yeah. Carlton Davis I, has some health concerns. But, yeah, uh, I do think you still draft someone. Sure. You, you definitely still draft a corner. And, you know, I don't know about 29. I, I think they're going to go best player available still at 29. But cornerbacks, yeah. I like that you can get outside of the first round. We've talked about TJ Tampa a lot on heavyweights. I like him a, a lot. One of my spotlights is on a player named Bernardo Green out of yeah. Florida State. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a high riser. I like him a lot as a cornerback in this draft. And those are guys that you can draft and if they don't need to be forced onto the field right away, they can grow behind guys like Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson to kind of nurture them into a role in the future. Yeah, I mean, those are some good ones. I like Cam Hart. If you're in the first round, you could do, I mean, Kool-Aid might fall, Kamari Lasseter, if you wanted to trade up and get a... Rakestraw. Rakestraw Rakestraw might fall as well if you want to trade up and get like an... an, an, uh, Andrew Wiggins, Nate Wiggins, or a Quinion Mitchell. That's all available. And we've seen Brad Holmes when he sees his guy, i.e. Jamison Williams, he'll go up and get him. And may- maybe, like like I've kind of touched on this before, maybe Brad Holmes is like, I don't want Kool-Aid McKinstry. I don't want Kamari Lasseter. I want Quinion Mitchell, just giving an example. And he'll try to go up and, uh, and get him. And also, free agency, there's a couple of names that I personally find intriguing. Mm-hmm. I know St- Stefan Gilmore is the is the one that everybody goes to. Is, uh, his uh, Spotrac average annual value, his market value is $11.1 million. But another name that I find kind of intriguing, what about Steven Nelson? I'm a big fan of like what he could potentially bring to this team. I mean, his numbers last season, 70, 70.6 passer rating allowed, only allowed one touchdown, had four picks, and over 1,000 outside corner snaps, and his uh, Spotrac value is 8.4. So there are and options. There's another guy like a Dory Jackson Dory out there who's yeah. still looking for a home, and that is a guy who brings – insane speed on the back end like we know he's one of the fastest corners in the nfl and we don't really have that speed back there yet you know amik robertson now is probably the fastest guy we have in the secondary yeah. but adory jackson is a guy who's been on multiple teams he's played a lot in the nfl plays the outside role and plays it at a pretty high pay, high rate so there are guys out there for sure mm-hmm. that you could spend on if you want to bring in a free agent i would probably prefer akello witherspoon as well he's 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 he's, he's another one Adoree Jackson, he had kind of a rough year last year, but yes, he's had some success mm-hmm. in the uh, in in the NFL for sure, especially when he yeah. was first uh, drafted. KG, who would you like for as far as the second quarter? Do you think they should draft one? Are you t- talking free agency, or do you think we're fine in house? Well, I mean, the Lions they could make it work as presently constructed, yeah. you know, because they have uh, uh, Robertson that can play the number two, yeah. and they can also have people chip in, you know, at the slot position. But I feel like Brad Holmes wanted to get away from that this year, and that is why he added so much to this room, and is still probably going to add more. Um, you know, I would I would urge that you still need uh, size on that other side because, you know, while while I like Robertson, he's only five nine, yeah. so I and I would prefer he plays the slot better. So my answer would be Stephon Gilmore. I feel like he's the perfect fit here. Maybe you could get him at a slight discount because his brother plays here. Um, but you get him on a one year deal. You still go out and draft maybe like a Max Melton, a Cam Hart, like you said, a TJ Tampa, and then you you have Gilmore you know uh help bring that player up and then next year you'll you'll have your number two but um as presently constructed they can make it work but my answer would be go get stefan gilmore on a one-year deal it's a nice easy deal and it, it can work out for you later on yeah no that's cool i, I i'm looking in the chat right rj graham <clears throat> you know and you guys are deeper what about deeper what about where brad holmes cooks in the draft third fourth fifth round or something like that or there's some du- guys out there you know, and maybe it's not to come in and and play that second role, but to be a part of part of this, you know, team to yeah. <clears throat> more of by committee, yeah. <clears throat> right? You know, you know what I'm saying? It's more of by committee. If you can get Carlton Davis to shut down, you know, one side, right? You can rotate, 
you know, wh- whether it's Robinson, you know, Branch coming down from say you can you can make that the other side, you know, look a little bit more. You can use plug and play guys off the bench, stuff like this. I like what you're saying. You bring in a veteran guy. That's yeah. that's what you're losing. You know, you're also losing a guy that's been around in the locker room. Exactly. Veteran. So you have to look to replace that also. Yeah. So and you know, is good. There, there's but, no reason why you couldn't do both. Go out and sign that yeah. veteran. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Amik is good, but you're facing a lot of wide receivers with size. So that's why I would just urge to I'm get also, like, a, yeah, a, a bigger plays corner. bigger than he is. We he saw does. him no, you're right. does, Christian Watson, a guy you're going to be playing twice a year, who is the big receiver on the Green Bay Packers in the red zone twice in a row. So that's like, true. That's, and when you're looking at the bigger, bigger guys, that's what you got Carlton Davis for. You got Carlton Davis to go one on one with but, Justin Jefferson. But isn't it also too is is when you're on a smaller guy like that? That's where I see like a Branch and a Robinson. You know, two guys sort of yeah. t- attacking one, yeah. helping each other out. Where you have like that's the luxury to have a lockdown corner. Yeah. With the size that he does, it's just like okay. Yeah. And if you want all the smoke, go take all the smoke. And then on the other side, it's more of that. You know, Tasmania, you know, mm-hmm. hard hit and stuff like yeah. get into the ball, making it uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm with you, KG. I def, I love big cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. I like big corner. It's Richard Sherman is one of my favorite cornerbacks that I ever got to watch, and he's a big dude, long dude. Long. Yeah. Long. You like? Do you, would you say you like long? I would say I like him. <laughs> you long. like long yeah, guy, yeah. long, long corner. Yeah. You like your quarterback <laughs> long, yeah. big and it's Carlton Like your drink, long. Carlton Davis is a big, long, physical guy on the outside. He's got long arms. He's good at playing one on one with bigger players. And Amik Robinson, although he's five nine. Plays bigger than he is, yeah. has that junkyard dog mentality where he's going to get in your face, talk shit, and is fast. So I think it's perfect. They're like 1-2 against, let's say, the Bears 1-2. Mm-hmm. Like Amik Robertson on Keenan Allen and then – or I mean uh, Carlton, Carlton Davis, Davis on Keenan Allen and then Amik Robertson on DJ Moore. I think that's a pretty good matchup as far as just – Straight up one-on-ones go with safety help over the top. That is a great example, and I was just about to bring it up. Jordan Addison, 5'11". Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jaden Reed, 5'11". Mm-hmm. And, you know, gee, like, like you said before, Jordan Addison, Amik Robertson's got him co- co- covered, and then Justin Jefferson, Carlton Davis. If you want to look at a Christian Watson, Carlton Davis, and Jaden Reed, Amik Robertson. I think the whole point of all of this is that, and I know Amik Robertson is, is a heavyweight's favorite, and he's a favorite of mine as well, is that, I wanted to point out at the beginning that Cam Sutton would be a big loss. He didn't have a great year last year, but he did in 2022, and he's shown he could be versatile playing in the slot or outside in 2020. But you have options in-house with Amik Robertson. I think he's better than a lot of people think. You've got options in the draft, whether you want to trade up, stand pat, or later rounds, and you still have a couple of free agents available who are not even that expensive. I mean, yeah. Steven Nelson's like eight. Yeah. Stephon Gilmore, 11. Who says no to either of those at this point? Yeah. I understand there's some complications with uh, Cam Sutton's uh, contract, but that's another story for another day but you know what is a story for every day or it should be if you've got a pet like my golden retriever jake and my orange cat milo from your pet shout out jake jake's awesome i remember when you guys brought him in amazing yep. dog and my dog holly i obviously get everything i need for her from premier pet supply because premier pet supply is hands down michigan's best pet store same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers with one major difference they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you same day local curbside home delivery premier pet supply give your pet the best www.premierpetsupply.com at work and at home we're there with smarter security solutions Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Love Woodward Sports? Love wearing clothes? Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today.
Are you tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports merch? It's new era in sports wearables, new designs, amazing apparel, and the ultimate swag. Check out Woodward Sports' latest gear at woodwardsports.com and click shop. Hoodies, tees, and the hats that are guaranteed guaranteed to turn heads. Get the latest designs today at woodwardsports.com and click shop. Welcome back to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network and uh, Terrell from FL in the chat. I'm glad you, glad you guys are coming around on Cam Hart from Notre Dame. He's a very smart, hardworking kid, and he was a dog last year for us. I'm assuming he's a Notre Dame fan. But, uh, yeah, and Cam Hart also put up, like, amazing coverage numbers as well. Only about 15 receptions for 37 yards. No touchdowns been targeted. Are you kidding me? 6-2 as well. He is certainly an option for maybe that uh, 73 pick. But we, sh- we shall see. We shall we see shall. what he. We shall see. And tactile puma in the chat. Of course, flannel would own a golden retriever and an orange cat. <laughs> I think those are perfectly fine, acceptable, borderline manly golden retriever. Yeah, Man, it's a wrong with that. Listen, Nothing I grew better. up with those. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah there's a family. Lassie, family man, come on. My now. centerman from junior, Jake Grimes. Jake, Jake my golden retriever, real dog, 14 years old. R.I.P. 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 Shout out to uh, I had Doberman growing. Now I got a. Now I got the princess Penelope Lou. Got a princess. I got a cat. Cats got are, a princess. Cats be cool. KG, do you have any pets? Uh, not currently, uh, but I will have a dog eventually. Look, awesome. I want I, a bull dog. So nice, dude. I, I rescued for years uh, English bulldogs, dude. I had Sarge nice, and nice. Hank, and named named uh, the big white one Hank after Zetterberg. Hank <laughs> Zeta was his official name. Nice. That's how cool Zetterberg is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, and and uh, just a fan, Sam. That's a great dog. Thank you, thank you. I I, I appreciate that. But do you know it's his who... wife's dog? <laughs> well, it's it's our dog. It Very is... cute dog. <laughs> thank you, thank thank you so much. He's a little too big to bring in now, but uh, when he was a puppy, we did uh, bring him in he's for a uh, for a visit. Yeah, he's 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 the man. But you know who else who was the man <laughs> last year? Ify Melifamu, of Damn course, right. and he had some very high praise for uh, his uh, de- or the Lions' defensive coordinator, one Mr. Aaron Glenn, who uh, I think is still a bit of a polarizing figure among some Lions fans. Let's listen to what uh, Ify Melifamu had to say. You think that's going to be like one of them things that's in your part it's of your game that's like, so. yeah, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah no, nah, definitely. Um, AG, our, our defensive coordinator, he he loved blitzing. Like as you guys seen, he's either blitzing the nickel or he's blitzing the linebacker, or he's blitzing me really. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just like there was play calls you would get in the huddle, and you just know once he called to see, I'm getting a sack, I'm getting <laughs> Yo, a sack, like hundred percent, I'm getting a sack, <laughs> or I'm getting a quarterback hit. And yeah, I think that's something he he's always gonna have that in his game, and um especially how well. With well, um, I did it. Mm-hmm. Listen, I think he's definitely gonna carry that over into next season. Gotcha. And he just he thinks a lot about that stuff. Like I'll be in his office, like after practice and and after meetings, and he'll explain the blitzes to me too. Like you're gonna show this way. Don't show it too early. It's gonna be open. It's either gonna be you or the running back, or he'll tell me like no one's gonna be there for you. It's yeah. just gonna be you. So I'm excited to see what you know the things he did, he comes up with next year. Damn, how does that help you though? Because I know, like, just having those meetings, getting those yeah. mental reps before you even in the game system, like, and then that shit showing the same way that yeah. you already thought about it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like, bro, right, he's so smart. Like a couple times, he, a couple times, he then told me like it's gonna show up exactly like this, like that. The Broncos, the Broncos play where I strip sack on Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. We called that exact blitz to that exact play. Like three times, at one once a day, like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And usually it never happened like that. You run, you know, you run this play call against this coverage, but in game they ran this coverage. Or you run this play call against, and then they that you run this coverage against this, and they run the ball. It was the exact play, bro. Like I can't That's make crazy. this shit up. It was the exact <laughs> play, and that happens a lot. Boy, Ag, that'll happen a lot. So it's definitely good. Just you know. Meeting with him, even if it's just like five extra minutes, ten minutes, thirty yeah. minutes. Sometimes it was over an hour, and just giving like he'll give me like little advice, me and the other safety Kirby Joseph, um, and then it will show up in the game. So that was tough. that was good. I'm definitely that's, gonna continue to do dope. that. So that was Ify Melifamu, safety for the Detroit Lions, doing an interview and having some really high praise for Aaron Glenn. And I'll tell you what, DMAC, it's got to feel good to see one of the players who really thrived under Aaron Glenn last year have such high praise for him. And it seems like he has trust in Aaron Glenn that Aaron Glenn will get the best out of him, <coughs> as he did. 
Well, he he's just reiterating, and then you're hearing exactly <clears throat> about playing, you know, chess and checkers and different things like that. But what the practice, the walkthroughs, all this different stuff, the mentality of the game. You know, I think I didn't Derek Barnes come out and say that the position that he was in to make the interception. Somebody mentioned it in the chat thread against Tampa Bay was was putting him in the right position. So a lot of times. Right, we question, you know, the bend but don't break and stuff like this, but there are things going into it. What it gets me to really realize as I'm listening to this, right? It's the guys that have been there. So now it's the constant message, right? Mm -hmm. So now it gets easy it, it gets easier because you're in the mentality of how it is, but you know what you're trying to do in practice. So when you got Malafamu telling you like this, when they're going through walkthroughs, they believe in their coach that he's going to put them in these positions that if they call this play, it's going to be a run and we're going to go to this and it's second nature. Everybody, right? That's the culture and stuff like this. Now, sometimes you might get it wrong, but more times than not, these are the, the game changers in the game. So the fact that everybody's on the same page and, and it doesn't matter what we think as fans, mm -hmm. the coaches, until you listen to what the, the players think. And then the, does the production prove Right? Like, there's one thing. It's no good if you're, oh, I love my coach, but then your actions and your production doesn't show it. This team showed that and the fact of you're getting a little bit behind the scenes of why that it works. Because they're prepared. Right? Because they prepare. I know that what he's talking about as a professional athlete, right? Yes. I've seen plays develop, you know, and just exactly the, the in hockey tonight. Right? If you see a guy coming down one, the left side or the right side, going to shoot. And there's a guy driving the net on the other side. Well, there's a lane, right, where the guy might not be shooting to score, but he's shooting for a rebound. And there's a literal lane that you drive to the net that more times than not, the rebound will come out. So the guy's not trying to score. He's trying to shoot it off the goalie's pad to kick you out a rebound, boom, right on your tape. What did you see last, you know, last night, the Wings game or uh, against – right near the end of the game, just the, fuck, the the puck popping out to certain guys not even taking a chance. You look at Raymond's tying goal, um, it did go off the defenseman's shin pass, but he was there. He was mm -hmm. in the right spot, stick on the ice. So that's how I, you know, relate it, contemplate it. But as, a, as an athlete, though, right, when stuff happens like that and your coach tells you and you believe and you trust and then you trust the process, that's what... That's what they're building towards. So yeah. now you have all these guys that have been doing this for a year, two years, uh, three years under Aaron Glenn and stuff like this under this regime. Then it's easier for the new guys to come in, no matter how decorated or not, because there's an operating system and the way yeah. that they do things. I mean, there's no different, uh, uh, Sam, if you talk to, you know, Kansas City or, or Andy, Andy Reid, one of the most famous people for probably doing this. Drawing different plays up that this and in football, that's the playing chess instead of playing checkers. So um, I like to hear it now. Now I want to see more results because we have to, have to improve, mm -hmm. have to improve, have to improve, and that that goes by showing me. You're telling me now. Now show me next year as you're setting it up. But I like everything that I'm hearing about it, and it makes me feel better as a fan because they're the guys get through. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. The guy, the guys listen. And the guys get through. Now, how could you not love what Ify Melifamu said and the trust that he has in his defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn? Just a fan, I'm predicting top 10 scoring defense and top 5 defense overall because of all the moves the Lions have made. Oh, Let's hope. wow. That would be... That sounds to me like a 14-3 and three or 15-2 and two Lions sound team. sound like they a Super Bowl to me. I mean, absolutely. They, they don't even have to do that, I think. But if they did, my goodness. Give uh, Aaron Glenn... Give Aaron Glenn assistant coach of the year after a lot of people wanted him fired for at lots of points. I'm not even begrudging you for that. I'm just saying. Uh, Ken G. Yes, sir. What are you thinking about uh, the comments that Ify Melifamu made? And how, how nice is it that he has such high praise for a defensive coordinator who really helped Ify thrive last year? Yeah, and um, I mean, it's, it's good to see. You definitely want to see that. And I just want to state that AG is a good defensive coordinator. Otherwise, he wouldn't have head coaching looks. Otherwise, he wouldn't have so much respect around the league. Now, can he be great? We think so. Um, there's been times where we've seen lapses in this defense, but ultimately the results have been he's gotten the most out of a little, and they've gotten to the NFC Championship 
off of that even with us getting torched you know by start receivers every other week you know so we just want to see ag improve with more talent that's always been the knock he doesn't have enough talent he doesn't have enough talent this year i feel like brad holmes did a real good job in addressing this defense he got really serious about trying to fix some of the problems that this defense had and we just want to see it on the field but by by no means do i think you know ag is a bad defensive coordinator this is why you have players saying things like that of that nature and i know that you know in the, in the uh, morning show I, I posed the question is this a hot seat year for ag and in some ways you know yeah it is because you he has i i guess i don't want to say underperformed but you just want to see more um and, and with this talent added to the team hopefully we will see more but um it makes sense to me year I, we're going into year four of the ag uh regime on defense the players are very familiar with this scheme so i expect them to be able to perform better in this game and, and he's gotten the most out of a lot of these young players man and that goes unnoticed a lot oh he most certainly has and to your point kg this is the most talent that ag's ever worked with on the defensive side of the ball so we're definitely going to need to see a leap from the from from the defense overall but uh go ahead I got some breaking news is uh, from Woodward Sports. It's um, Michigan's defensive line coach Greg Scruggs has resigned from his position following his arrest on Saturday. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was I'm okay with that. Yeah. I was hoping that he would be fired because you don't want any distractions or uh, fuckery in the um, amongst your amongst your your coaches, your leaders of men. So uh, don't don't do what you did, and you would have been on the coaching staff still. N don't have a problem with that at all. But thank you for. Uh, for uh, letting letting me know, and I'm sure most Michigan fans will. Uh, hey, Spenny, real quick, w wasn't AG voted by the players as the number one defensive coordinator? Yeah. Yes, he was. Okay, yeah. just that's what might, I mean. You he, might he's have got you know, respect, but you get right. So you want to say to me that interview tells you why, and it's the connection to his players. Why you know everybody would respect him. Some things that we don't see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're not supposed to see him as fans. Right. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, I think that. Voting him number one is a little aggressive. No, but I, Sam, it's I understand. not the point of it. The point it is, it's coming from the players. It's not a freaking. Uh, it, it's not a does he deserve whatever like this. This is their opinion, the and it goes into the communication, for. and it goes right. into things. What if Yelafamu just said that? Yes, Sam. St Statistically, <laughs> somebody other defensive coordinator could be better and deserve to get voted. But by the players, they're saying that this guy hits it. And this is just adding to the fact of when me and Easy were at the Pistons game, you know, sitting courtside. Shout out Chad Johnson for the tickets. Uh, we saw Ali McNeil back there and we had a conversation with him and he nice. said that Aaron Glenn is a defensive genius. Like mm -hmm. th this guy knows what he's doing. He's a wizard. And like the stuff if he was saying about how he knows the play calls, he knows what call is going to go where and how to counter it before it even happens. It's just more proof. So to here's the beauty. Oh my gosh, guys! As the talent gets better on your defense, maybe that they you have the ability to actually. Wow. Wow. No, I, wow. I understand that. All I'm saying is the players voting AG number one is the reason why guys like me have jobs. Because some people have to be able to see no, the No, Sam, you're not a player, so you were never in on the vote. And it didn't <laughs> I even, understand you that. You were He's irrelevant clear. to uh -oh. that vote. Uh -oh. that you don't even look at that because it's players, coaches. Sam's right? So up. you're arguing <laughs> that the players are wrong. You're, not, you're telling he's me not the that best the best defensive coordinator of the league, not even close. He's, he's good. He go. He's you, good. Sam, you're missing the category. <laughs> All right, I know. The category is the players, not the fucking broadcasters, not the fucking guy who sits up here and speculates and has a job because of the play. it's the players. Which Sam, I don't know if you know Hang this though. There, if you go down there, you can't get into the locker room without fucking help, right? Because you're not a player. I know. So the <laughs> fact is. Why you want to get in on somebody else that you, your, your vote doesn't count. Your opinion to this doesn't matter because you don't take it from the player's opinion. You're, you're sitting here telling me that the players got it wrong. Well, they did get it wrong. but they, How was, did they get it wrong when it's their it, vote as it. players? <laughs> you're taking... It's, anybody help me out here? Can, can you, it's, Kenny, no, I, I Kenny you can you mean, help me out with the yeah, fact that absolutely. it was never about... Anybody's opinion. Exactly. It's all about the guys that blood, sweat, and tears behind it that see that every time. 
Spenny, what do I hear more that you talk to different guys? Ask Malcolm next time when you talk to him. Yeah. Does 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 defensive genius come to it's the player's mentality, right. so you gotta like it to the fact. It's not a fucking pageant Oscar sir. This is right, right. what your player this yeah. is culture. This is the guy they wanted to play for more. This than is culture. Else. Yeah. To the fact so so Sam, why didn't the other guys around the league fucking die hard for their guy? That like there's other telling signs and and it's all about culture. It's not about numbers, it's not yeah. about stats, it's not about anything else. It's about what's going on there. And if you aren't excited because of these little nuggets coming out. Yeah. Cause believe me, it. if he was bad, we would know. The players would definitely be out here giving signs that hey, it's not good in this locker room with him as our coach. Um, you it's it's hard. You, you when you lose a locker room, you can definitely see it. So to but your it tells point, you it's, it's all about the imperativeness of why they resigned these guys. Why why they have to run it back now. Yeah. We got to go to break. We are way over. No. Oh, that's and, and that's that, Sam's fault. I know <laughs> it, 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 it is. It is my fault. No, I'm I kidding. almost got in the. Box. I'll take credit for that one. I will. T it's thank thank you, D Mac. But uh, where I can always get my workout, and if I want to be at least like look more like an athlete, Planet Fitness, of course. Planet Fitness is home of the Judgment Free Zone, where anyone and we mean anyone can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you will experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout in just thirty minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all of this for only $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by. There are more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. Perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango ice tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. The off season smells good. Woodward Sports. Love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Oh, man, I'm looking around. We don't have any of these. I would fire one of these up right now in the studio. The new glorious ice water pre bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds. Constantly Ooh. pushing to create the best can of experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust. And no, I wouldn't share it with Sam. <laughs> Allowing flour with only the highest terp sets flavor, making best even better. Glorious can of checks out today. Your local retail, probably dispo if you're smarter. Go to glorious can of two ends. Dot com. Welcome back to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. Just and even just, a little dog walker right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to uh, tie a little bow on the Iffy Melifamu stuff because I don't want to be perceived as an Aaron Glenn hater or anything like that. I mean, I'm the one who, I mean, th th think about this. One of their units last year was elite, their run defense. And I was about to go on this big spiel about how Iffy Melifamu, nobody benefited from Aaron Glenn. Nobody really took a leap forward more than Iffy did this Thanks. year. I mean, the whole season, he was really, really good. The ninth rated PFF safety in the entire NFL. And that includes all games, but it was really... Those last four games, I'm sure if he, uh, I'm sure Aaron Glenn knew that he had a guy at Ify Melifamu who could blitz and who could get home, and Ify Melifamu most certainly did. Three sacks in the last four games, two in the three playoff games, had the game ceiling pick in the game that clinched the NFC North for the Detroit Lions. So yeah, Ify Melifamu was the perfect person to get interviewed and to speak on Aaron Glenn because he's kind of one of those living proof guys that Aaron Glenn is a good defensive coordinator, that he does put his players in positions to succeed. I mean, who would have thought before the beginning of last season that going into this next offseason, of, uh, I would say a huge portion of the Detroit Lions fan base, including myself, was like, ah, C.J. Garner johnson can go. We've got Ify Melifamu. That was unfathomable at that point. Yeah. But it's what it is right now. Because yeah. Ify Melifamu is better. And he's on a rookie contract. 
So that, that's that's my point, that Aaron Glenn is a damn good defensive coordinator. or And he's we're going to see more of what he is, too, when he gets more talent. Go ahead, KG. Oh, no, no, I was looking out the window. Hey, looking I, out the window. We do have to go to break, like, right now, because we <laughs> did go way over. But I do just want to say... Flannel, you're not wrong in saying that Aaron Glenn isn't the best defensive coordinator. I'm not even arguing that. that. Yeah, Yeah, it's just the players want to play for him more than anybody else. They voted him as the guy they'll follow into a foxhole more than any other coach in the NFL. Well, and that's why, and this, DMAC, we've actually talked about it before. My point was that you can't have every analyst, you can't have every show just be players or former players. I have a different perspective than say you or say Ify Melifamu, Lee McNeil, other players around the, the NFL. I can look at some of the ways in which the Lions defense has underperformed. Even though it's more of a talent issue, some of Aaron Glenn's mistakes and be like, there's no way he's the number one defensive coordinator. But if you ask a guy like Ify Melifamu, who thrived... But- Sam. I understand, but Sam. like I, I've, I've got a voice. <laughs> Sam, it's not no, but you're arguing the the fact that you're arguing there's a case of friggin' apples over here, and you're telling me it's oranges. You're not even in the conversation. Yes, your opinion matters, but not when you're talking about who the Spenny nailed it. Who the, who's the defensive coordinator? The guys would go through the wall for the right. most. Yeah, right. Doesn't mean the best or whatever. So can you concede that? Like that's what they're talking about. Right. Who. Be who a can in. get the buy-in yeah. from their players the most? Now, if you put talent around it, now's the time where it's put up or shut up, mm-hmm. yeah. right? This this season by putting everything together. But the fact is, and what are we? What have I always said from the perspective? Right? Look at the coaching staff, former players. Everybody's connected, right? It's one Randall, all the receivers, yeah. freaking yeah. Hank Fraley. Yeah. This is all part. And who put that together? Aaron Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so what I'm saying is, right, forget stats and and all this PFF and all this just go culture of of look at here of men that want to play all throughout for their guy, their Dude. leader, to go into battle, go into war. Yeah, that's what he wants. That's what you want to see. He yes. won the favorite. I don't know. Gluteus Maximus. Who knows? <laughs> well, and just to tie a quick bow, Ify Melifamu took a huge leap. Aleem took a huge leap. Hutch took a leap. Anzalone. Brian Branch, Anzalone took a leap. Uh, Barnes took a leap. And Brian Branch had a a great rookie season. I would say I would definitely say great rookie season. So he obviously knows how to get the most out of some younger guys. And we'll see what he can do with like guys like DJ Reader and Carlton Davis. But when we come back, we're going to get into a little bit of the Detroit Red Wings because they have a big game tonight against the New, New York Islanders. Well, I was about to say New Orleans. New York Islanders. But first, where can I get insurance, DMAC? Good news, bad news. Bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. Good news is Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make you carrier. Does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call my buddy Mark today. Swiss Insurance, 248-800-4177. Or go to SwissINS.com. Tell him Woodward Sports, we sent you. And tell you about the quarterback challenge presented by Shake Shack and Woodward Sports. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports want to remind you it's always football season. How would you like to win two free tickets to this season's home opener? It's the Shake Shack quarterback challenge. If you could throw it on a rope, you can be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location at WilbertSports.com or scan the QR code right there to enter the QB challenge to possibly win two tickets to the Detroit football home opener. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. (laughs) Every year, 
After a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Football season is officially over and spring training is right around the corner. However, Jack Labrador is 24-7, 365 days a year. Learn how to play now on your phone at jacklabrador.gg. Two new symbols and a franchise changing three-point play. And remember that once you go Jack, you never go back. Go to jacklabrador.gg. Welcome back to Big DRG Live on the Woodward Sports Network. I am Flannel Sam filling in for Neil Rule. He's got an NCAA tournament game to call tonight, and we will all be rooting for Oakland to support our friend Neil Rule. To the man to my left is Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings. We've got KG in the audio booth. We've got Spencer Raxter, also host of the Woodward Heavyweights Shout in out. the TD booth, 5 to 7 p.m. tonight. You should be watching it every night. If you watch Big D Energy, also watch the Woodward Heavyweights. Check it they, out. They, check it out. They do a great job. <laughs> that was a terrible impression, Horrible. but that is okay. That's Horrible. not what I do. <laughs> but anywho. Tip's about to happen right now. Tip is about to happen right now, so Spenmo Rex might be a little distracted, but like I said before, I do not blame you one bit. And if you have any updates that you want to share, feel free because we can... When there's an NCAA tournament game going on, we can certainly hijack the show for any of those reasons. But the Detroit Red Wings, they've got a big game tonight. They save their season, or should I say, Lucas Raymond and Patrick Kane save their season with a Lucas Raymond with a clutch goal assisted by Kane with 12 seconds left in regulation to tie it against Columbus. And then the overtime winner from Patrick Kane, the third consecutive overtime game for the Red Wings that has ended in a Patrick Kane game winner. But... I wouldn't say it's all for naught if they don't win tonight against the New York, New York Islanders, but when you look at the standings, when you look at how poorly the Red Wings have played in the last 10, only winning two of them, if you can win this game against the Islanders in that proverbial four-point game, as Mike G stated in the, uh, in the, in the WoodwardSports.com chat, after all that has gone down, you're still in a spot where you can control your own destiny. Albeit, I understand that you're going on the road for five games in an absolute gauntlet. But with Washington losing last night and potentially a Detroit Red Wings win over the New York Islanders, things might stabilize again, D-Mac. What do you think? No, I mean, it's, it's now or never. you got 15 games left. I mean, you've, uh, I'll reiterate, uh, Mike's right as far as four-point game. And, and here's the thing. What do I always say? Is you make mistakes, you got to learn from them. You're in the same position a couple weeks ago with the Islanders coming in where it's a four-point game also. So no better time than, than the present. It's time for different guys to step up. Hopefully they can use, right, because it wasn't easy. Nothing's come easy for this team. They've had to work work through all of it. So tonight's no different. doesn't get any easier, but you're in the heart of it. And if you're supposed to be this team to make that next step, then you will – find a way to hold on to at least that eighth uh eighth and last wild card spot. Yeah, and like I said, this is this is one of those games you gotta have it. It's a muscle. Well it just makes it easier on yeah. yourself. Yeah. I mean yeah. make it easier. It's not the end of the world until like mathematically, but it, come on, if you're gonna do something, now we make time. it a little bit easier on yourself. What channel is that on? Spitty already hype. Sorry. It's it's oh yeah I am hype. Oh, CBS. CBS. All yeah, right. Michigan that, State, two stops already, and Jaden Nakins knocked down a three, so oh, good man. start. Of course. If Jaden Nakins can hit threes, they're huge key to them to them uh, going far in the tournament. I hope it doesn't happen, but uh, Spen Morax is going to be on. He's he's <laughs> going to be, like I said, he's, he's going to be on it all, all, all the all It's hard not to show. be happy for Spenny, man. No, of course, of course. Great. This is the best start you can imagine right oh, now. Oh, jeez, it's five to nothing right now. But, yeah. The Red Wings, you kind of got to kick the Islanders while they're down at this point. I mean, the Red Wings were just in the middle of one of their valleys of the season, and the Islanders, helped spearheaded by a win at LCA, were kind of in their peak form, and now they're valleying themselves. So if the Red Wings, if they can beat the Islanders tonight, I mean... Well, now's the time, right? Yeah, they're on yeah. a five-game losing yeah. streak, right? Like, as far as whatever, you got to kick these guys when they're down. If there's yeah. any more motivation, it's Patrick Waugh, coach team. Hello, 
Have some pride. Mm -hmm. Have some pride. Own this guy. Yeah. Yes. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. you're going to let him come in? I mean, I I wouldn't. No. I, I, Not my choice, but I mean, hey, 2024. 2024. But if, if the Islanders. So, so here it is, Spenny. And I know that I'm taking you away as we're playing a little bit of defense as the guy's slashing to the basket. Um, to the fact of first goal tonight. Yeah. Right? We said that. The imperativeness to get off to a good start. When you're playing a team that is is battling you, but also two uh, five games in a row losing, get on the board early. That's the number one thing we haven't done. we got to come out to, to a, a big start, but also get a lead. Yes. Right? We've made it harder on ourselves than we've had to. I, I got a good feeling about I that. I needed to bring a goal in the first period. You know what? And what did I say? If he cra he cracks it early, he could, he could get going. But yes, yeah. in a perfect world, it it, it will be a to bring a goal. Yeah. But we'll take anybody's goal. Yes, we will take anybody's. It has to be a to bring a goal. He has zero in the last ten games, and I understand that. Uh, I that you can do everything right and still not get one. But it's a ten game stretch in which he's had two points, and the Red Wings are two and eight in those games for his entire career. And this isn't his 40 goal seasons. This is his entire career. He is a .8 point per game guy. In his last 10 games, he's .2. You got to step up. And if you want to go even deeper than that, um, so, go, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, so at this point of the year, cream rises to the top. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? This is where if he's off, is that like guys like him, not only streaky, but they're going to get their points. So this actually, to be able to weather this storm and still be in it with arguably your best scorer not even showing up, that's a good sign because he's going to show up and no better time than starting it now. And if he gets hot now, hopefully he can carry it out because we need him through the rest of the season. We don't know what's going on with Dylan Larkin. Right? Yep. I, I, in fact, I know what's going on with Dylan Larkin, but I ain't telling anybody. No. Right. That's the way it is. <laughs> um, so the fact is it's time for guys to step up and, and Alex to bring. If you're going to put, right, if you're going to circle somebody, circle that guy. You know what, Alex, to break it? Darren McCarty says tonight's the night, kid. Come on. Yes, Let's do this. You're a Michigan kid. You're a Detroit native and stuff like this. You know what this means. Do it for me. Yeah. Do it just, just, just because when I'm having those bad days and I think about – could be worse. It could be Patrick Waugh. Let me think about this. <laughs> Come on. Well, the bottom line is Alex Dubrik, it kind of owes his team at this point. And it's not too late. It's not too late at all. By this recent 10-game stretch of poor play, they've made it tougher on themselves than it needs to be, but they also can rebound from that. They got a win against Buffalo, which was big. They got a win against Columbus, which was big as well. And now you can kind of I, you, you're not mathematically vanquishing the New York Islanders, but you're kind of making it to where they're objectively less of a threat, at least moving forward than, say, the Washington Capitals. you got to win your head-to-heads, which, speaking of which, you've, your second game on the road trip is also the Washington Capitals. So you've got plenty of opportunities moving forward to uh, to right this ship and make it into, into the playoffs. That stretch didn't cost you. It cost you some comfort it might cost you the playoffs but this is where your guys like Alex Dabrinkit and JT Comfer and Daniel Sprong need to step up because they've kind of let the team down recently and maybe don't rely so much on Alex Lyon I want to see more James Reimer is, is everybody in the room in, in, in agree it's more yeah no you're right he <laughs> won the last couple of games and I yeah. would assume that he's going to still continue to get the start tonight here's what it also make it and I said this earlier in the year that power play. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. At, lately, it's been more of a hindrance, you know, even though it's got, you know, a couple goals here and there. But, like, let's make it a stalwart. Like, you mm -hmm. know, would make teams pay. Teams right now aren't, aren't afraid of your power play because you haven't executed. That's something that, you know what, get find a way to get to bring it some shots early. That's also, too, Spenny, we brought that up, right? Look at the shots on goal. If through two periods, the wings, you know, if they can generate 10 shots a period on goal, like that's pretty much the average. They haven't been doing that in games. They've been getting behind. They've been getting outshot early. So, yeah. again, imperativeness to get off to a good start. Mm -hmm. Hey, and 1-0 and o with Simon Edvinson in the lineup as well. I understand it was a home game against Columbus in which you're favored. But, hey, it couldn't get... It couldn't get worse than what it was. Hey, there's that. There's that handsome. The call has been answered. <laughs> the call has been answered. Today. Bring up the speeds. He's there. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, they they definitely There's so many. They have like, I just love. It's just Draper, man. Draper found all these Swedes. We have so many good Swedish prospects in our in our pipeline. It's so awesome, man. Wouldn't it Look be at your minor league system. Yeah, you got guys coming, dude. My, I'm not even. 
Carter Mazer's my dude coming up, dude, mm-hmm. and, and he's a mm-hmm. local local kid, and, and you know, a little Spitfire, you know, you know, cause some cause some trash, but also score some goals. So, like, if you look at what's coming up in Grand Rapids, yeah. Future it's development, hard. and it's not <clears throat> the old adage with Kenny Holland would mean let him percolate, right? Like mm-hmm. they they're they're gonna over, but there was no roster spots on the big club, so you know you didn't want to get in the Red Wing organization. Now it's the development. And and you are so it's just trust, trust in the fact that that this is for the long haul, right? Right. So, but the, but guys have to do it now. The expectations. I took the clock off. The clock's still yeah. off. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And they're still they still control their own destiny. And wouldn't it be a nice? I know he played a little bit last year within the NHL, but your real introduction to the NHL be a piece that helps carry this team into the playoffs. I'm talking about Simon Edmondson, of course. You, hey, You're awesome. You write, you write fairy tales about that. Well, he is a number of years. But still, it would be a hell of a way to a start off your career. But uh, if people maybe want to bulk up a little bit, have some bulking meals or even some cutting meals if you want to diet a little bit, probably more bulking, you go to Big Boy, of course. Seafood Fest is back at Big Boy. Catch it while you can. Dive into Fish and Chips, their new Parmesan-crusted cod, perfectly fried clam strip platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. A big boy must try the new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to their popcorn shrimp, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Every day is a fish fry at Big Boy, and don't forget, every Friday night, the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. See you at Big Boy. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, myself, that handsome guy in the middle with the cutoff sleeves, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banner, and live fan interaction all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. Welcome back to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. It looks like Mississippi State just got a steal and a layup to cut the Michigan State lead to uh, two points. And Spenny, I can feel your passion just from the booth because I know amongst Detroit oh. sports uh, personalities, there's a, a difference of some, in particular one, kind of is just done with the team and saying, like, I don't care anymore. But Spenmo, just seeing them in the tournament, I can tell that you are locked to F in. So... I'm going to ask you right now, is this the start that you'd hope they'd get off to, or how, how, how are you feeling so far? This is a good start. It was a good start. It looks like they're bringing back in Aikens and uh, Maddie, but this is a good start. Or who is that on the first? Is it? Oh, it's Cohen Carr and Aikens about to check in. This is a good start for uh, the Spartans. Let's go, man. Oh, Maddie All with right. a- good, good dunk there from Maddie Sissoko. Mississippi State's, uh, they're a tough team. They're, they're a physical team. They play big. So we need to match that physicality with guys like Maddie Sissoko, big guards like A.J. Hogart, and it looks like they're going to be double-teaming Malik Hall on the block. So there's going to be a lot of open three-point opportunities for our guards. They're going to need to to knock them down because we've already been able to swing it around with some of those guys, but you need... Oh, God. Okay, thank God. But you you need to make sure that you get out of the double-team, crisp passes, and knock down shots because they're going to be given some open looks. Tyson Walker for three. Oh, Let's go. Let's go, Tyson. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 
yeah, it's a good start. Good start. Very excited. So how excited are you that uh, you've already seen an Aikens 3, a Hogard 3, and a Tyson Walker 3? I mean, to me, that bodes well for Michigan State winning this game. Yeah, it does. If we're shooting well, we will win uh, flat out. If we shoot the ball as we've shot in the first, you know, seven minutes, then we're going to win the game. They're, they're playing well. It looks like they're bringing the starters back in. Or no, Jackson Kohler also coming to check in. Good Ooh. defense. Oh, Xavier yeah. Booker. Good. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, let's go, Tyson. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay, back to back threes, Tyson Walker. Michigan State up 10. Some other players about to check in. Let's fucking go. So, if you're one of those Michigan State fans who has kind of checked out on the season, which. I, I think that's a little bit aggressive considering you still have a tournament, but obviously you guys had a disappointing regular season. You're missing out on this, on this, like on this potential. I mean, they have a 10 point lead, not even 10 points, not even 10 minutes into the, uh, into the game. So if you're a Michigan state fan, I would, uh, I would advise to uh, lock in and at least see how far that this team can go. I mean, Spenny, what's the, what's the ceiling for this team? I mean, can they, I don't want to get. I know you don't probably don't want to get too ahead of yourself, but uh, how far can this team go? This team can, if they if they play well, if the guards play well, if they shoot the ball well, they can play with with other teams in this tournament. Like they were ranked number four to start the season for a reason because of the amount, the talent they have, the depth of the guard rotation, especially with the emergence of Trey Holloman this year. They have four guards that can carry this offense at any given time. So if those guys are shooting the ball well, we can we can play. We can hang with some guys. It is, I'm worried about the second half though, because we've given up a lot of late leads this year. So that's something you got to worry for, but Sparty can play with anyone. Uh, Andrew Jones right here. Spart Sparty can beat anyone and lose to anyone. And that's a hundred percent true. If they're shooting the ball, like they're shooting the ball right now, they can hang with anybody in the country. Yeah. And, and to piggyback off of that, because I see some things in the chat, but first I just want to ask, have you adjusted your expectations for this team because a hoof hearted in the chat i was told michigan state should win the championship this year so anything less is a failure they are supposed to be winning i mean sheesh and and for and yeah, well, hey hey hoof hearted welcome welcome to the beginning of the season like what are we <laughs> what are we doing here i already spoke on this multiple times throughout the season that yes this season's been a disappointment but you're in the dance sorry michigan didn't even make the nit but they're in the dance right now so there's a chance do i think they're going to win the tournament no is this season a disappointment? Yes. But I'm watching my favorite team play in an NCAA tournament game right now, so I'm going to be excited. So I have I had kind of a similar experience a couple years ago as maybe what you're going through now. A Michigan team that had the mm -hmm. number one recruiting class, I think the number three recruiting class in the country, the best recruiting class in the Big Ten by far, the Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate, yeah. Hunter Dickinson coming back here. That recruiting class also had Frankie Collins and Kobe Bufkin. Damn, and they how were long ago that yeah, was. Yeah, I know. And they were preseason ranked number six, and they barely got into the tournament. I mean, you could argue that, 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 that they shouldn't have. They made a sweet 16 run, but even after their Sweet 16 run, their final record was 19 and 15. My question, though, is what would be a successful season? I mean, is there, it's hard to say if anything short of a Final Four would be a successful season. But Any, if, yeah, nothing short of a Final Four would be a successful season based on the expectations you had. Would State, though, if they made a Sweet 16 run like Michigan did in 2022, would that, would that be a feather in your cap or would you just kind of say it was hollow? I mean, yeah, it's, it'd be nice to see them do that, obviously. But based on the expectations, preseason, anything short of a Final Four is a failure from what we were at preseason-wise. Yeah. But... Going through the season, if they make a, a Sweet 16 based on how they played this year, I'll be extremely happy with that. Well, that would probably or presumably include a win over number one seed, North Carolina, who's just uh, littered with uh, veteran guys who it seems like they've been in, the, in college for uh, 10 years. But they also have, I think, a couple of, of younger NBA prospects. So, And you've also you've seen Xavier Booker get some, uh, get some playing time. I mean, are you – I'm assuming that Oof. when you watch Michigan State games – and it seems like this way, even during home games, the the fans just erupt every time Xavier Booker gets some playing time and, and makes a play. Like, how happy would you be for him if this is his coming out party? In a this way? would be huge. This would be huge. I mean, he's gotten some more minutes as the season's progressed, but he is the most talented player on the roster. He is the highest rated player on the roster. Like, he is your five-star. So 
Next year, he's going to be a big factor. And him, Fears, and Cohen Carr are all going to be a huge factor in Spartan success next year with Trey Holloman leading this team. But I'm excited to see him co- go out there. He got a lot of solid minutes. Knock it down. Oh, let's wow. go. Let's go. That is who we need. That, that has been your, se- your season this year. Has been Malik Hall doing that. That is, he has been the best player on this who, team who all used year pro- by far. Who's he? He is, he's your small forward. What's his name? He, Malik Hall. There, yeah, there he, it is. he is by far your best player on this team all year, and he needs to lead them through. And if they're not going to double him like they were in the first couple minutes, he's going to eat in the mid range. Can I can I ask you guys a question? Good yeah. board. Is this fair to say, right? Like with and and I know that the Houston's and the Yukons is number ones or whatever like this, but are are the Sparties Spenny? Are they one of the sleepers they can in the, in this tournament? That if they like they could make some noise and I know that we expect them to win this game and, and especially the way they're playing here and stuff like this. And I know their matchup against North Carolina, but who are the, do you have sleep? Would this be one of your sleeper teams in the tournament or is there, is there a couple like this? I, I find it hard that if, if we beat this team, go up against UNC, that's going to be a tough matchup because Baycott is going to be able to eat on the inside. Now, we got a lot of big bodies to throw ahead at him, like Maddie, like Xavier Booker, like Carson Cooper, like Jackson Kohler. Like, we got guys that we can throw at him, but he's going to he's gonna be a menace in the paint. They're going to have to double-team him. So if we do get past Mississippi State and face UNC, then we're just going to have to pray that UNC is missing shots because they're going to get a lot of open three-point shots in that game. Yeah, they most certainly are. And you, you you mentioned it, Spenny. I know that you as Michigan State fans didn't anticipate having to rely on Malik Hall as much as you have, but he's delivered. He's had the best season of his career by leaps and bounds, yes. certainly better than, a, than a last year. Has he played his way into the NBA? I think so. Okay. I think so. I, I think he's played his way into a, probably a second-round pick. But still, he he he'll make a roster. He he plays well. He hustles. He's a little older, so that might be yeah. something that hampers him. He'll get drafted. I don't know if he'll be an NBA player, but he'll get drafted. Yeah, and that's 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 100 fair. And like like you, I don't expect Michigan State to beat North Carolina, but some of those teams that underperformed, I would say that North Carolina would say that their ideal matchup in the round of 32 wouldn't be this talented of a Michigan State team, at least on paper. No, this is a scary team to go. Yeah. Like if we're making shots like we are now, I forget who said it in the chat. They can beat to anybody and they can lose to anybody. Yeah, and we know that everything in the tournament is dictated on guard play. And MSU, with Trey Holloman playing the way he has down the stretch, has four guards who can play and play well. With A.J. Hogarth, Jaden Akins, Tyson Walker, and Trey Holloman. So those guys are going to, as, as much as I love Malik Hall, it's going to be up to those guys. That our run depends on those guys because they're going to be getting the open shots. As in the tournament, everything gets down to the middle. Obviously, they're going to start double-teaming Malik Hall. Those guys are going to be getting open shots on the perimeter. If they can knock them down, we can win. Yeah, and I wouldn't, as much as I've looked at Michigan State this year, and I've thought, at least on some networks, even even some of these shows, that they've gotten off a little bit easy. But I think one of the reasons they've gotten off easy is because they can right all of the wrongs. Yes. In theory, they can. It's is not it, over till it's over. Is it likely? No. no. But, like, I mean, I, I hate to do this comparison again. I mean, Michigan in 2022, they made a Sweet 16 run after having a horribly disappointing year. You saw guys like Musa Diabate, who played, who had a disappointing freshman year, step up in the in the Tennessee game. You saw a guy like Eli Brooks, veteran Eli Brooks guard, go off in that game. So anything anything can happen. Sometimes, maybe some of these players, I mean, you saw A.J. Hogarth hit a three. You saw Jaden Akins hit a three. Mm-hmm. You saw Jaden Akins, whose three-point percentage was kind of disappointing this year. Maybe he could find the uh, four, be, be the 40% guy that he was last year. A.J. Hogarth, maybe he can be the guy that he was in the tournament last year. You just mm-hmm. never know. And that's why, as a Michigan fan, I'm not going to say that I'm scared of State making a Final Four run, but if I had to guess... They're going to hold on and win this game, and they're going to give me a couple of nervous moments against North Carolina and North Carolina sub. uh, There's still a lot of time to play, and like uh, Michigan State fans, we've seen this all year where you get off to a hot streak and then you let it go in the second half. I like is is Tom Izzo in a suit or is he wearing a quarter zip? Because if he's in a suit, we're going to (laughs) win. He's not in a suit, I don't think. Uh But um, yeah, you got. I mean, you got to play a full game. That's what it is. You got to play a full game. And that's not something we've done a lot this year. They've been better down the stretch, but you need to play a full game, and, and you can't let it go in the second half. This is 
No one would have expected this 20 to 8 start, though. And I'm no. going to take. And if we can get defensive minutes out there from Jackson Kohler, uh, that is a win. Because Jackson Kohler is by far our worst defensive big man, and he's played pretty well so far. But he is our best. Uh oh. He's our best in the post. He has the best post moves on the team. Like Carson Cooper is great on defense, can't do anything on offense. Jackson Kohler is great on offense, can't do anything on defense. So if you combined all of our three big men into one guy, he would be the best big man in the country. Like if he had Carson Cooper's defense, Jackson Kohler's offense, and oh. Maddie's size, oh. he would be the no, best big man out. in the country. Yeah, well, and and those are maybe some of those unsung guys who need to uh, who need to step up. Oh, oh man. what happened? What happened? I, I was looking for the he went for the King Kong alley oop and Kong Car missed the oop. Well, He's missed the three. Ugh, oh right. well, that's a that's a that's a bit of a swing there. But uh, rack in the chat. <laughs> Sam hates to keep bringing up Michigan, but keeps doing it anyway. LOL. But hey, I the only reason I bring it up is because I think it's somewhat of a comparison where. Myself as a Michigan fan and Spenny as a state there it is. fan. Oh, oh. maybe. Oh, come man. on, come, come on, on, Trey. Is that? It's two. It's two of them, Trey. Is that getting too cute or? or no, that's that the right play. That was the right play. That was just bad execution. And he was wide open. It was a double team. They double team Jackson Kohler. Uh, Cohen Carr was wide open baseline. He's the most. He's the best athlete in college basketball. You throw him the oop. It was just bad execution. Fair. Both of them. Fair enough, and those are the plays that you're going to have to make if they want to hang on. But we shall see. There's a lot of basketball left, but you know what never lets you down? A haircut at Lady Jane's. They're walking to Lady Jane's for the award-winning haircut experience from one of the talented uh, stylists who will always get it done. You can get the neck shave, the lather, ears clean, whatever it takes. Lady Jane's haircuts for men open seven days a week. Walk in any time. It's working awesome. And let me tell you about the Grand tell Slam us. Fest. If you want to see Spenny in his element, if you want to see <laughs> Prime Me doing the things I do best, come down and join us for Grand Slam, the opening day festival. It is Detroit's biggest opening day party Friday. Friday, April 5th, starting at 9 a.m. It's in the Detroit Opera House parking lot. You can get tickets at GrandSlamFest.com. Make sure you come join us. It's a lot of fun. It's been fun every year, and we're going to have a great time. Again, that's Grand Slam Fest, Friday, April 5th, starting at 9 a.m. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward. Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Shots, 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 shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. What happens when you run a great business for over 50, yes, 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust on Woodward Ave. Just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford and Dearborn today. LesStanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet. Sam. Together, let's, let's drive. drive. Yes, we welcome back to Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. I am Flannel Sam. The man to my left who needs no introduction is four-time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings, Darren McCarty. We got KG in the sound booth and Spencer Raxter, a little preoccupied, but I don't blame it. I'm all him at all in the TV booth. Mississippi State went on a little 7-0 run, which I'm sure hit you a little bit more nervous than you were before. But uh, that's the ebbs and flow of basketball mm -hmm. and certainly the uh, NCAA tournament and a rack in the chat one of our one of the best chat members by the way and i've met him a couple times great dude yeah cool people i'm a little jealous spenny has something to cheer for today right yep 
That, and, and that's that's all us Michigan fans can say, at least when it comes to a tournament basketball, because Michigan was so far out of the tournament that they can't even see the line. But you know what? Brighter future ahead, Jawan. But anywho, I wanted to get to something that can unite everybody in this room. Casey Mize. Yes, sir. Looking pretty good in last spring. I mean, more than pretty good. Looking like he can maybe get back to what he once was. So, uh, DMAC, what do you expect from Casey Mize this year coming off of it, coming off of that uh, Tommy John surgery? Well, I expect him to – I expect big things, actually, because of what Tommy John surgery has meant to other pitchers in this league, that it's not a death sentence. It's actually, you know, a revitalization. So, yeah. to me, slow and steady. There's no need to rush. You know, if you see that they're going to give him, you know, sort of some time to, to air it out. But I, I honestly, Sam, yeah. expect him to come back, you know, as good, as good if not better than he was. Let's hope. I ex like, that's just, to me, the history of the Tommy John surgery in the past, you know, five, six, seven years. There's, there's guys that are coming back to it. So if that's the case, you know, more and more seeing this starting lineup and stuff like this and the weakness of this division, that this starting lineup can, can, car can carry us and hopefully, you know, right. find some bats, find yeah. some guys that, you know, can get it done. But, um, yeah, I, I expect Casey Mize to, you know, here's, here's the one thing. To be healthy, and you know what, if he's healthy, we were talking about Tarek Scuba for Sky Young. I'm not talking Casey Mize for Sky Young. I'm talk, talking about him for Comeback Player of the Year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that that's my expectations. If Casey Mize is in the conversation for Comeback Player of the Year, then we're on our way. Yeah. Oh, if Casey Mize is in, comeback, is, is in contention for Comeback Player of the Year. Right, but, yeah. but do you not do, – am I out of line no, with, no. with the history of what Tommy John surgery, right? Yeah, before it's not you, a death you, sentence anymore. We just, it used to be a death sentence, yeah. right? It used to be like that knee it's injury. It's like the ACL in football used to be, you know. Yep. Bam. Yeah. I mean, to further your point that you're not crazy at all in, in your assessment that maybe Casey Mize could be comeback player of the year. Spenny, I know you're preoccupied, but Casey Mize <laughs> or Tarek Skubal, who's the ace if they're all both at full strength? I think it's still Skubal based on okay. what yeah. he's done. We need to, you got to let Casey get back into it first before we start doing that. Yeah. Fair. But like, I, and then here's the question though, right? Like, and I don't think it's, it's a question, but it could be question down the road and they're going to push each other. Oh yeah. Right. You know, oh, yeah. you, you got, you know, the ability do we have, and it's, yeah. don't take this out of context, but the fact of potential with healthy, with ability to be Scherzer, Verlander, yeah, ish. Exactly. -ish you, you can of, have more than one the ace. the top of the lineup battling each other where you're questioning, okay, who's going to start this game because you got aces. Yeah, you can have more than one, definitely. And then Jackson Job is another one who hey. may be which, a future which ace is, of ours. Which so. coming along, which, which, it you know doesn't matter, but it seems like more of the the, the if he's gonna get fast tracked, it might be later on in the season. But you know, mm -hmm. watch him go through. That, that's the one thing with Scott Harris is if guys deserve to get fast tracked, I believe that you're yeah. you're you're gonna get you're not gonna get stuck down at double A AA or triple A. Right. You can help this team, especially right now. So yeah. it'll, wait and see. I I'm telling you and everybody. I'm. Baseball is my first love, or whatever, and sort of. But the more we start talking about it, the more the more amped I'm getting. I'm telling you, to, to, you Watch know, to get down me. there just to see what we got. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm amped. You're amped. Spenny's amped. KG, what do you expect from Casey Mize this year? I am amped, um, but yeah, I just expect him to be a consistent force in the pitching rotation. I mean, kind of asking him to, to be 100% healthy the whole year, you know, that might be a little much, but I just expect him to go out there, put his best stuff forward, and just stay on the field as much as you can because his stuff speaks for itself. I mean, it, this guy was a phenom coming into the draft. Um, he got slow by the Tommy Johns, but like d -Mac said, it's, it's not – one of those things that's a career killer anymore so i just expect him to go out there and and contribute to what should be a really good pitching rotation i'm excited for for you know what we'll see out of them and i feel like as long as he can keep his era you know uh below four or or low fours i i, I feel like that's a successful season and then going forward he'll only get better well last time we saw casey mice for a full season 21 2021 over 30 starts 150 innings pitch era of about 370 exactly that, i mean that you, I, 
you'd like to see it a little bit better than that. Yeah, as, uh, yeah. It looks like who just hit a three? Jaden Akins again, damn. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, over time, I expect it to get better. But just this year, yeah. stay in the lineup consistently and, and bring your best stuff every night. And I think it'll work itself out. Well, I mean, you look at the pitching staff right now. Casey Mize, I just mentioned what he did last time he was healthy. We all know what Tarek Skubal did yep. last year, sp specifically in the month of September when he was the best pitcher on the planet. Matt Manning was good in his 15 starts. I mean, even Reese Olsen. I was joking, but not really on Tuesday on our show from Planet Fitness that in the month of September, we had ourselves a little bit of an Arizona Diamondbacks, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling in the month of September with Tarek Skubal and Reese Olsen. We know what Jack Flaherty has done, was not good it. last year, but in 2021 oh. he was, and in 2019 he was great. Yep. Um, looked Tamai okay in spring. He, yeah, he had like a 329 ERA. Yeah, it looked good in spring. Ken so. Maeda is that uh, veteran who's just steady every single year. I know that he had an injury in 2022, but uh, over 150 starts and ERA under four. So this pitching staff could be really good, and one of the keys to it is can Casey Mize ever regain his old form? And I'll ask you one time spending now that the Michigan State has – push the lead to nine and maybe you're a little you're a little less <laughs> relaxing you're a little more relaxed is Casey Mize is he a guy that one day you expect to compete for Cy Young's yeah I mean if he can stay healthy he's got the stuff that mm -hmm. he'll be he'll be on that level that's obviously the biggest thing is if he can stay healthy yeah because we know he's got the pitches we know he's got the arm talent to be able to do it but I can't put a definitive statement on that before he plays a full season right. that's fair that was a little that was probably an unfair question to me but yeah. I know you're probably as high on Mize as anybody I love in the Casey Mize. Yes. Yeah, and you expect him to that's yeah. what he was drafted yes. for he was a very highly touted pick coming into the league so that's what we want to see out of him yes and uh when we come back we're let's let's do some mailbag put any questions that you want answered for me Darren McCarty Kate G. I might have a question for you, Sam. All right. Spend more racks as well, even though he's preoccupied. He'll find some time. And KG, I cannot wait to answer. I'm a little nervous, though, but Isn't that's that crazy. All right. That's all right. <laughs> but if anybody needs pain relief or just feeling just to feel good, at least for some, Dispo. Oh, 100 go. million percent. That's yes. where I'm stopping on my way downtown tonight. To for sure, if you can too, visit Dispo Dispensary today for exclusive new deals and experience. A team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the date for 420. Dispo Dispensary just was putting on epic, yes, epic events at all locations. Stay tuned for more details. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis plug. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Final segment of the day. Big D Energy Live on the Woodward Sports Network. I am Flannel Sam filling in for Neil Rule. He's got an NCAA tournament game to call tonight. Oakland University against Shout Kentucky. Out. Go open. Let's go Grizzlies tonight. We are all Grizzlies fans at Woodward Sports, at least for tonight and always because we want Neil Rule to succeed. To our left, to my left, we've got Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion with the Detroit Red Wings. We've got KG in the sound booth and Spenmo Rex, a little preoccupied but still doing a great job in the TD booth. And uh, Spencer, you've got something. Yeah, we do. Uh, we got an email from our guy Kyle R. in the Woodward Sports chat. He put it out there. He says, uh, he met DMAC last year at a golf tournament in Belleville. One of the best days of his life mm. was meeting his hero, thanking him for the memories and uh, hey. story, helping him with his battle with alcoholism. He got some pictures of that day. He sent them over. These are a couple. And uh, he never sent his picture of his Christmas gift, which was a signed Darren McCarty jersey. I didn't put that picture in, but he sent it. It's an autographed jersey of DMAC. 
He says, uh, also, it's his birthday today. DMAC sent him a birthday message a few, few years ago, and he plays it every year. Uh, he was. He said, I was hoping for an upgraded one where he doesn't have to begrudgingly mention his Packers. Sorry, guys, but if not, <laughs> it's all good. Thank you, boys. Love the show. That's what was his name? Man. Uh, Kyle Rogers. Kyle Rogers. I think that's up in Trillium, up in Val- Val Vegas, where I played junior. And I think that uh, old Chico Joe Roberto and I were just talking about how I'm going to try to make my way back up there for that tournament in July this year. So hopefully I'll see you there. But until then, brother, happy birthday. Remember, you're not alone. Uh, this goes for everybody out there. Is uh, you got to get it out of here, no matter what it is. And uh, props, props to you. It's not not an easy thing, anything anybody's battling with. But uh, the fact is that uh, you face your monsters. Um, you can do what I do. Um, I'm friends with all my monsters, but they're yard pets. I feed them every day, but they're outdoor guests, and they don't get to come in the house. Mm-hmm. And they like it because your monsters. They just want. They make you who you are. They yeah. just want to know to be appreciated. So that's true. Uh, happy birthday, Kyle. Happy birthday, Kyle. And a shout out. We've got a couple of professional athletes at our network who also double as heroes in their just in their spare time. Uh, Braylon Edwards, of course, and uh, <laughs> oh, Darren McCurdy. Well, Bray, Braylon takes it to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. Whole new <laughs> ever, diff. Whole new. I, I still haven't talked to him about that. That has that has to be wild. Yeah. yeah. Um. One of the things, and and shout out to the away fan. I, lo- I love. You know, always bring great questions. And there's a question in the chat about Stanley Cup hats, Ooh. right? Which one's the favorite Stanley Cup hat, right? And and I make this joke all the time. Yeah, you don't have the hats there, but can you? How do you tell me that you haven't won a cup in 42 years without telling me? The '97 <laughs> hat, oh. right, is the worst hat ever, except <laughs> for now when you sign it because it's got that. It looks like it should have been in the. Port here on the Mackinac boat race because it's got the brim. Oh yeah, and it's and it's brown. Great to sign now. Mm-hmm. My favorite though would have to be the '98 one, which is sort of black and gray. The '02 mm-hmm. and the '08 ones were more white and T-Mac can't have. Come on, right, man. right. So the '98 was my special one, but I always make the the joke about how how do you know you haven't won in 42 years? Uh, whoever dropped the ball on that first. First Stanley Cup yeah. hat. Xavier Booker already checking in for a second stint of minutes. Ooh. I like that. And worst thing oh, he's about out. those Never hats, <laughs> it had that, you know, like the, the, the not snap. the clip it, not the trucker hat, the snap not the fit, oh, okay. it, that the snap thing, and it's gross. Yeah. Just look like, you know, like. Yeah. Who yeah, wears that You got to pull through. Yeah, you know, that. you got to yeah, pull yeah. it through. It's just stupid. Shout out for having four to choose from, though. That's that's pretty no, cool. No, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a flex. Mississippi State shooting two of 11 from three. Jesus. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's not Gotta good. Yeah. Don't trade. Yeah, it is, Sam. <laughs> what is, God damn it, Sam. That's the best thing that we could hope for, right, Spenny? He said he's rooting against us. So. Why would I why would I, root, right, come why on. would I root for State? All right, come on now. Would you root for Michigan you State? Had, you told me to. You were, all, you were doing the same thing during Michigan's tournament run. Was I? <laughs> I didn't think I was. Was I? Yeah. You're like, you got to root for us, man. Oh, I that. support Spenny. That's it. So. I support Spenny being happy on heavyweights. Exactly. So. Thank you. So so that but, will be my saving grace but, if, if, if they do win. Go ahead, KG. I am a little jealous, Spenny. You get to sit up here and cheer his team on. You know, as Michigan fans, we suffering right now. Can't watch our basketball team. But I brought this question up on uh, Wake Up Woodward, and you don't have to give a, a super extensive answer, but is John Beeline a real possible candidate for the Michigan head coaching job no you don't think so no because he's 71 I understand you're looking for a guy who's going to build the program I'm looking for I mean I I get it he's done it before I've seen people talking about it though that's why I brought it up uh, no I just laugh because he says he's 71 and then yet we're gonna vote on a president hey right in his 80s (laughs) we are both of them like I mean like so (laughs) the context is, is is he too old or but or has the game I don't think I don't think it's a bad buffer. You don't think he can do it for a couple of years yeah, till you, they find the right guy? You don't if, think he at least deserves a phone call? Oh, he he certainly does. He's just he's another one of those guys with stuff that I've personally heard is another one that loves teaching basketball and obviously was a phenomenal coach at Michigan, but with the changing landscape, you know how it engulfed guys like Saban and Krzyzewski and Jay Wright. Mm -hmm. He's another one that maybe doesn't want to come back and deal with all of that. Right. But there are, there's, 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 there's great candidates. There's a, there's Dusty May from Florida Atlantic. There's Chris Collins from from Northwestern. You've got James Madison's yes, head coach. That, too, that would be my first call if I was Michigan. I would, I, I, I would, I would love that. I wouldn't mind bringing in like a Will Wade 
or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Ryan Dutcher from uh, San Diego State, although he's a little old too and was a long time assistant. But at least Dutcher has a he's carried the uh, he's carried on the San Diego State program after uh, after Steve Fisher left. So there's a lot of good candidates. I just think John Beeline at this point. He's kind of that sentimental, the way things once were, the thing, the way that I long for them to come back as Mississippi State is going on a nice 6-0 run <laughs> to end the half. Michigan St State is probably going to hold for the last shot. But no, that my answer to that, no to uh, John Beeline. I wouldn't be mad or yell and scream, but just I don't think it makes sense for where the program is right now. Yeah. That's it. That is it. And that is also it for Big D Energy today because I know Spenny wants to get to the back and watch the uh, rest of the game. Yeah, he's and tired gonna, of us. He's I'm, already gone. <laughs> is it, but you know what? I'm going to join you guys. I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick in the office until the game is over and uh, either celebrate a Mississippi State win or be upset but be happy for my friends spend more racks no you go talk your shit celebrate you you celebrate you go talk your shit that's so weak dude. that's it's such weak. a i'm so glad i gotta go downtown and play hockey right now <laughs> why would i want michigan state to do well you don't we want, want you don't have to want but celebrating them losing is weak well, be, but then they would. I, I would get to to always say that you guys in your most talented team in so however many years we went like 19 and 15 and in a tournament oh, ter first round tournament loss. That's Sam, all. ready to hate. Yeah, your most your most talented team in however many years didn't even make the tournament and lost in the NIT. That's fine. But <laughs> yeah, they did lose in the NIT. It when Joey Baker finally decided to show up in the goddamn NIT. But anywho, that's neither here nor there. Deuces. Deuces, yes.